Well, hello there, Peter Noyce Thomas here again on thin ice for Screen Sport as we take a look at the European Short Track Speed Skating Championship, known as Europa Cup 92, from Liederkerke in Belgium. Pretty important stuff, this, because this year short track speed skating is out there and happening in the Winter Olympics in, uh, well, not very long at all, in February, of course. We're taking a look at two days of speed skating here. And we kick off with the ladies' 1,500 metres first semi-final. And unfortunately, there is no British presence here. Debbie Palmer went out in race three and didn't even score a point. But uh, right now we've got Maria Rosa Candida, number 18, closest to the camera, diminutive little figure, world record holder in 3,000 metres, but right here she's doing 1,500 metres. Next to her, Monique Velzeboa, and then you can see the Russian girl there, Julia Vlasova. Velzeboa is here in force, I can tell you. You're going to see Simone Velzeboa and the two brothers as well. There's a whole family here. So that was uh, Tamara Casala, Hungarian girl. The other Italian girl is Marinella Canclini. And finally, the Belgian girl, Bea Pinton. 110 metres around this circuit. Uh, 1,500 metres, if you work that out, that's 13 and a half times around. A lot of tactics here. And you can see Maria Rosa Candida just crossing herself there and getting ready for the start. Tactics, absolutely paramount in this distance of speed skating. And there'll be some team rules as well. Everyone trying to catch the eyes of their coaches and team selectors for those last-minute changes and the fine-tuning for the Winter Olympics. So the Belgian girl moves into the lead, a little cheer from the crowd. And uh, Bia Pintens leading the Italian girl. And then Velza Boa. Then the Russian girl, Julia Flasova. Then the other Italian girl, and uh, right up the back there, the Hungarian girl, Tamara Casala. And these girls will have been training hard all summer. Not necessarily on ice. A lot of them uh, will, be, will have been using what we call inline skates. They're like roller skates, but they've got four wheels, one in front of the other. And they can train on concrete training surfaces. And uh, it's rather nice in the summer for them to get out into the fresh air and be able to do their training out there. Incredible muscle strength in the legs, certainly in the quadriceps and the upper legs. Uh, where they get their speed and that explosive sprinting power. Right, the pace starting to pick up now as the Russian girl moves into the lead. And uh, Julia Flasova. The top three girls out of these six going through into the final. And the pace certainly picking up. And Bia Pintens is still in there in second place with uh, Velzeboa. Is she losing contact, Velzeboa, the Dutch girl? Be interesting to see. No, she isn't losing contact. She's biding her time, and you can see her. While also in fourth place is the Italian. So there's very little in it at this stage. And as I said, tactics were terribly important, and the Belgian girl just loses it to Velzeboa and then takes it back again. No, the Belgian girl's now in third. And the think of the strain and the pressure on this Russian girl. She's been leading lap after lap now, and she must be starting to feel the strain as Velzeboa chooses this moment to move into the lead. And the tall, they're all tall, the Velzeboa family. Big, tall, strong skaters, of course. Holland, such a strong skating country. And as I say so, the Italian girl is just moving up on the inside there and making her presence felt for Velzeboa. This is Marinella Canclini. The other Italian girl is uh, way back round out the back. So, Marinella Canclini. Bea Pintens is in third place, but she's being challenged by the Russian girl who made a little slip there, the Russian girl, and will have lost some speed. I think she was very tired, you know, having led for so much of the early stages of that event. Molly Velzeboa goes through with a time of 243.19 from Marinella Canclini, 243.39. And you can see 
how well this Italian girl's skating. Challenging all of the time, hardly anything in it at the end of 1,500 metres. Uh, was literally point, there's two tenths of a second between the girls. Bea Pinson's 243.62 was another third of a second uh, behind there. So, Velzebo, Canclini and Pintens go through to the final. Vlasova gets a point for being in fourth place. And, of course, those points are all added up to an overall standings uh, at the end of this Europa Cup event. We so we move on to the second heat, or second semi-final of the ladies' 1,500 metres. And... 29. From Russia, Julia 29, the Russian girl gets the inside lane, Julia Alagova. Number two, Belgium, number two the Belgian girl. <laughs> A nice little smile there from number Julia Alagova. <laughs> and uh, the Dutch girl there number 23, is Priscilla Ernst. And uh, another, there's three Dutch girls in this. 23 is uh, Joella van Kurtzfeld. And that is Simona Belzebaba. Gives a little smile. Pretty looking girl, isn't she? And this is Muriel Lessieux, a tough character indeed, this French girl. So. Three Dutch girls in this event, and only three are going through. Russians are strong. French, a bit of an unknown quantity at this stage. So off they go. Once again, tactics, all important. I'm making the pace, the Russian girl, well, and one of the Velza Boas is uh, out there as well. So that's Simona Velzeboa. Her sister Monique won that first semi-final. And Simon, it's elegant and graceful, isn't it, when you watch them just cruising around here, trying each other out. That's Sophie Pinton's uh, taking the lead for a while, the local Belgian girl. But coming out, making a move on the outside is Priscilla Ernst. She's a Dutch girl as well, but wearing a totally different Uniform, thank heaven, so we can recognize her. And she's in the lead at the moment. Priscilla Ernst, 25. Well, as I say, that Muriel Lessieux, the French girl, moves. Well, she screams out into the front, and surely she can't be serious at this stage. Um, certainly lifting the pace up a bit here. The world record pace is 228.26, and the last semi-final was won in 2.43, so, you know, nowhere near world record pace at this stage. But the girls won't be looking for speed. And we can see that the rest of the field have caught back up again now. And we've got Velzeboa and Kurtzfeld. Uh, second and third, well, no, in third position now has gone Priscilla Ernst. But Muriel Lessieux, the French girl, still in the lead. And this is where it's telling, not knowing what's going on behind you. And one of the Dutch girls, Simone, is starting to... Make a move now, and that isn't Simone, that's Joel van uh, Kurtzfeld. Moves into the lead, and the French girl tiring a bit now. Not knowing how strong these Dutch girls are, she must have uh, looked at their form as the two Dutch girls go into the lead. And the third Dutch girl is in fourth position. So they really are dominating this event. The Belgian girl, Sophie Pinson's way, way out of it, right up the back there, having led for a couple of laps earlier on. So you can see Van Kurtzfeld now starting to stretch out the field. And the Russian girl making a move. Julia Alagolova has had a fantastic uh, race. She's been absolutely well placed as they hit the bell and storm out for the line. And it looks as if the Russian girl might even catch Van Kurtzfeld at this stage. So Van Kurtzfeld, no, is putting on a final sprint, crosses the line well ahead. And uh, so two Dutch girls go through, Simone Velzeboa and Joella van Kurtzfeld. And good uh, tactical racing from Julia Alagolova, the Russian girl. They go through to the ladies' final. Priscilla Ernst, 
was in fourth, way off the pace. Good second behind the others. Muriel Lessieux paid for her early leading. Here we can see in slow motion the graceful power these girls have got. And a good win there for Van Kurtzfeld. And she's impressed upon the Russian girl. Look at this, these two are so close for third and fourth. And there was just five hundredths of a second between those two. That's about half a skate's length. And we'll be back after a short break with more short track speed skating. Wow. The Ford Ski Report takes you up into the mountain. Liederkirche for the Europa Cup short track speed skating. And uh, you'll notice some British uh, interest has got through to, to this event, and uh, that was Stuart Horsball being introduced to the crowd there. And uh, the British fielding very strong team. That's uh, Orazio Fagoni, who is the world record holder, well, yet to be ratified, but the unofficial world record holder for 500 meters. Um, and he's moved up a distance here to 1,500 meters. That was uh, Alain de Reuter. And Jan Hugeveen for Holland. And Hugo Herrenhoff for Italy. So the six guys lined up. And uh, we'll be keeping our eye on Stuart Horsfall, one of uh, a big team of British here in Belgium, of course, including Wilf O'Reilly and uh, Nicky Gooch, who we'll be seeing later on as well. So the British men found their way through all of the heats without too much problem. Um, what we saw in the ladies' event was um, very much more polite than we could expect from the men's event. A very physical sport, short track. And you can see Stuart Horsepool keeping well out of problems at the back of the field at the moment. Tactics once again. Very important as the two Belgian guys, Gert Blankert and Alan de Reuter, started off the early pace but now the battle's already on as the two italians hugo hernhoff and orazio fagoni uh, split the two belgians up and uh, well it's as if they've left the others for dead at this stage uh, really piling on the pressure remember this is uh, the first semi-final the top four get points the top three go through to the final so there's bound to be a bit of team tactics going on here And you can see real effort for the Belgian to pull back into that second place. And uh, you can just see, we'll see a slow motion of that, I should think, in a moment. But Blanchet from De Reuter, uh, leaving the two Italians third and fourth. And Stuart Horsepool uh, ended up back in fifth with Jan Hugevin. Here we can see where the action really started to hot up the two Italians splitting and you can see Blanchet really had to make a, a move back there having lost it around uh, that corner so good resilience there from Giet Blanchet who goes through to the final and uh, the two Italians skating as one virtually there now this is where you can see the problems that occurred with Stuart Horsepool we missed that first time out and Stuart very nearly falls and actually skates uh, right out and it was a big bundle between Yang Hugovin and Stuart Horsepool there. Okay, we move on to the next semi-final, race 46. And this is where we see our own star, Wilf O'Reilly, number 15. So, first one out on the ice is Mark Velzebur. Uh, the French skater Arnaud Drouet.
and uh, they're just sorting it out. I heard somebody say 15 there, so that'll be Wilf O'Reilly. There we go. So along he comes, one of our great Olympic medal hopes, of course. The camera giving him the once over. So, Mark Velzerboer there. This is uh, the German skater, Reni Goschnik. See all the different footwear the boys are wearing. And then our final British entry in the semi final, Nicky Gooch. And that completes the lineup for this semi final. We would obviously expect Wilf to keep out of trouble and get through. And hopefully, Nicky will do as well. But there's no doubt about it, this is going to be uh, real rough and tumble, fast and furious stuff. The world record for this distance stands at 221.21. Well, the first semi final, they were way, way, way outside that. But uh, 13 and a half laps. And Wilf O'Reilly takes it out from the word go. And all the different shapes and sizes. It's extraordinary, isn't it? The big, tall Dutchman there, Eric Duvelshoff. And Nicky Gooch is just cruising along there. Nicely placed in the pack. And O'Reilly starting to take the pace up now and splitting everybody up. Velzebur is not letting him go. Velzebur is hanging on there, and the rest of the pack, as they hit this bell so quickly, these men compared with the ladies, don't they? And O'Reilly really showing what he's made of as he moves way out, and Nicky Gooch making a move now. The top three, of course, going through to the final, and Nicky Gooch looks as if he'd got that sewn up as well. So good British performance there. There we see O'Reilly from Velzebur, from Gooch, and Eric Dufelsov gets one point but doesn't go through. And uh, the French, Arnaud Drouet is fifth, the Frenchman, and René Goschnik, the German, came in sixth. A very nicely timed move by Nicky Gooch. As you can see, O'Reilly starts to really move the pace up at this stage. He's just keeping an eye on, uh, on everybody, just using his sideways vision there. And he made the break at exactly the right time. Super. So now it's time to have a look at the ladies' finals. And a nice facility here. Uh, I'm surprised there are not more people here, to be honest with you, but... Here are the girls again, and we move off with the 1500 metre finals. So the lineup, there's Marinella Canclini, who came second in uh, her semi final. That's Simon Velzebar. That's Julia Alagolova, the Russian girl. <laughs> Bia Pintens getting a cheer from her Belgian home crowd, looking a little nervous here. There's Joëlla van Kutzfeld, another Dutch girl. And Monique Velzebauer, who won her heat or her semi-final. So this is the final of the women's 1500 metres. So they're away now, and we'll see who makes the pace. Obviously, Canclini was uh, on the inside, had the best start position, but it, this sort of distance makes uh, very little difference uh, as Monique Velzeboa went out there, made a little bit of pace. Beer Pinton's uh, taking it over now. The girls just jostling for position. Tactics all important, as I said. Ever changing at this stage.
And uh, with three Dutch girls in here, it shows how strong they are in Holland for skating. Right, now the pace starting to heat up. And I don't think I'm going to be... Well, the Italian girl now starting to make uh, an impression. Marinello Canclini came through on the inside and is now... Well, that looks like uh, Monique Velzaboa, who had a bit of a, a crash there. And the Russian girl starting to come through, Julia Alugulova now. So it's Monique Velzaboa from... Uh... Here we go, this is the final lap from Marinella Canclini from the Russian girl. It's got to be these three who go through to the final, I would have thought. Storming through. Number 22, Monique Velzebar. So, we have a problem with Monique. And as we watch the action now, we're just keeping an eye on number 22. and see what the judges didn't like about, there she is dead center of the screen, what the judges didn't like about her skate because they have disqualified her, leaving Marinella Canclini up the top. And there she goes, uh, obstructing and creating problems there for teammate uh, Joella van Kurzfeld. So after that, we see Marinella Canclini wins ahead of the Russian girl Julia Alagolova, ahead of uh, Simone Velzeboa. Bear Pinson's the Belgian girl, gets fourth. And that was a shame, really, for Monique Velzeboa, who was going well. But uh, I did say it was a physical sport, and the girls know the rules better than I do, that's for sure. So we move on to the men now, and their final for the 1,500 metres. And here we see both Nikki Gooch and O'Reilly through there. So, uh, the guys will be introduced. Let's get Blanchet, the Belgian. And the other Belgian behind him is Alain de Reuter. There's uh, O'Reilly. So, Alain de Reuter. Now we get a Start order coming through. So there's Will O'Reilly. He gets drawn in that's the equivalent of the second lane. Then Alain de Reuter. Next to his teammates goes Get Blanchett. And the Italian, Hugo Hernot, goes through, leaving Nicky Gooch uh, way out there on the outside, number 17. So that's the lineup. <coughs> so this is the final of the men's 1500 metres Europa Cup. 1992, and Britain surely got a very good chance of a podium position here with O'Reilly, our flag carrier. Slight delay at the start here. And they're called up to the start line now. So the man to make the first showing will... Well, he's O'Reilly. I was going to say it'll be Valzaboa, but uh, O'Reilly out there, that's where he likes to be, out of trouble, making the pace. Uh, Valzaboa is in second place. And that's Gerd Blanchard in third place. The Italian Hugo Herrenhardt, fourth. The other Belgian, Alain de Reuter, fifth. 
And old Nicky riding shotgun as he did in his semi-final. He won't let the pack get away from him, but he's well out of trouble. And if there's any argy-bargy going on, Blanchard. Well, the, Alain de Reuter, the other Belgian, has moved into the front. Now, Blanchard doesn't like that, so he then nips through on the inside, and the two Belgians playing hide-and-seek there. So that's Blanchard out front from de Reuter. O'Reilly, OK there, except that Velzahoba has just come through on the outside and is now in second place, leaving O'Reilly third with the Italian stalking him and Nicky Gooch stalking him. So Blanchard looking fairly relaxed, but Velzaboa is poised, ready to go. Now somebody's going to start making a break now, and it's all hell out there. You can see O'Reilly trying to take the long way round on the outside, and well, he's moved into the front there, just ahead of Gerd Blanchard. So O'Reilly out front from Blanchard. The Italian now in third place, Hugo Herrenhardt. And it's uh, uh, O'Reilly having to go the long way round all the time, but he's showing superior speed at this stage. But is Blanchard just biding his time? And where's Nicky Gooch? So these two now just showing their superior speed and acceleration, but still not losing the Italian. Hugo Hurnhot, who's in third position at the moment. Velzaboa hanging around in fourth. Uh, Nicky Gooch is fifth. And Alain de Reuter, who made uh, a bit of the pace earlier on, the other Belgian, is uh, way, way, way out of contention now. The Italian's looking dangerous at this stage. The Italian looking as if he's about to pounce. Will O'Reilly knowing full well what's going on behind him and starting to pull out at last desperate few strides and the legs will be aching. And look at that, Blanchard just storms into the lead, but Will O'Reilly isn't giving up yet and he's been boxed. In fact, he actually fell there and I'm not quite sure what sort of uh, position that will give him. It was, certainly was excellent skating from the Belgian get Blanchard, but uh, look at this, a real bustle and hustle. I think he'll, well, he's been given second position, which won't please the Italian, I'm sure. Come down the road to Elbeville at eight. Welcome back to Leiderkirche in Belgium for the Europa Cup 92 short track speed skating. And we just uh, wound up with a really exciting men's final to the 1500 meters. And uh, O'Reilly was brought down actually on the line. And what you didn't see, unfortunately, was he went over and uh, shook hands with the Italian and said, no problems. That's what uh, short track racing is all about. It was a nice little scene just to the side of the rink. Well, we've got a nice little scene here as we move on to the ladies' semi-finals. This is the first semi-final of the 500 metres, the event that's over before it's begun. This is the Russian girl, Natalia Sakova. That was Monique uh, Velzebo we saw first out. The Italian girl, Cristina Schiola. And then the world record holder, Maria Rosa Candido. Diminutive, but uh, dangerous as anything. So it's a bit of a different scene here. The two girls, one and two, go through to the final. Two semi-finals. And it's just 500 meters. And not so much tactics, of course, in this event. Belzebur on the inside will have advantage as they go into the first turn. But as I say, that uh, it's Christina Schola out in front and showing tremendous sprint speed here. And Schola way out at the moment. And Velzaboa, the whole clutch of Velzaboa is here. Oh, and one of the Italian girls took a real tumble there. I think that was Maria Rosa Candida. And so that leaves the Russian girl to come through now. Natalia Sakova is in a position to pounce now. And she's pushing very hard, but Monique Velzaboa is not letting it go. The other Italian girl's gone off and taken off the uh, Russian girl as well. So. Well, I told you it was physical sport. And uh, as long as you can finish, I suppose it's all right. Looks as if she's got a bad back. I'm sure she hasn't. OK, so she gets second place there. Christina Schola, who went off ages ago, gets third place. And Maria Rosa Candida, who went off first of all, gets uh, 
fourth place. So Monique Velzaboa and Natalia Chukova go through. Here we see it. Look, when, when they're moving this fast, just trying to hang on there is the difficult thing. They're taking these corners absolutely flat out. It's virtually all the corners, hardly any straightaways. One little slip and you just lose the, the equivalent of traction on those blades. They're not carving around and uh, off they go. No problem as far as uh, hurting themselves, of course, because well padded around the outside. You can see she just caught the, caught the tip there. And uh, <laughs> cannot believe it as we see Maria Rosa Candida looking over the crash mat and seeing her teammate smashing into the other one. Well, a bit of excitement there. But I'll just confirm that uh, Monique Velzeber, the Dutch girl, and Shakova, the Russian girl, go through. And we move on to 58. Uh, in this event, that's uh, Simone Velzeber. As I said, there are two sisters and two brothers here. They've actually got a monopoly uh, on the short track here in Liederkerke. Number 16 is Marinella Canclini, who we will go across to now. There she is. And uh, Julia Vlaslova, the first of the Russian girls. And uh, the second Russian girl, Victoria Taranini. And everyone keeping an eye, as I said, uh, bearing in mind the Winter Olympics are just round the corner, so that Russian girl closest to it is Taranina. Next to her is Vlasova, but uh, at the moment, Velzaboa is setting the pace. The Italian girl is right on her shoulder and Julia Vlaslova is in third position. And amazing to see the different lines they take. It's all Italian girl out in front at the moment, Marinella Canclini, really putting on some pace here and trying to make up for the two falls in the last heat and trying to uh, keep Italy's flag flying here in Belgium. So the Italian girl out in the lead at the moment. The Russian girl, Julia Vleslova, in second position. And then it's anyone's guess between Simone Velzeboa and the other Russian girl, Taranina. But right now, uh, and look to me as if, well, there she, there's the result. Marinella Canclina takes it ahead of Julia Vleslova. Those two go through to the final. So no falls there. and. Uh, you can see how that young lady from Italy put the pressure on right from the start and absolutely hung on in there to just take it. And second and third was very close indeed, as you can see. The two Russian girls and uh, Vlasova just getting it by half a skate's length, leaving uh, Velzaboa back in fourth position. So there she goes, Manuela Canclini, going through to wave the Italian flag in the final, which we will be seeing later on. Incredible how fit these speed skaters are, very special sort of uh, fitness as well. So here's the men's semi-finals now for 500 meters. And that's Geron Otta. From France, we've got Remy Ingres and our own Matthew Jasper there wearing the Union Jack. Very proudly across his chest. We're looking for medals in the Winter Olympics and uh, we've got some good chances, I can tell you. So, the Belgian boy, Gert Blanchet, closest to the camera at this stage. And the men's world record for 500 meters is just 44, 46. It looks as if Otter false started there. The world record for 500 meters, as I was saying, for men. Here, we have a look at the false start. Yeah, and Otter was well away, wasn't he? Hey, that's a gambling man. <laughs> so they're lining up again. They're saying to O'Reilly, just get a little closer. Don't crowd the boys on the inside. 
Did I say O'Reilly? I meant Matthew Jasper, sorry. That Union Jack. Uh, closest to the camera. And away they go. Gerd Blanchard on the inside moves into the lead. And we can see Remy Ingres in second place with Jerome Otter, the false starter, in third place. And it looks as if Matthew Jasper is trying to get past him at the moment. Doesn't look all that comfortable, to be honest with you. And at the moment, the Belgian is way out in front. Uh, well, as I say that, Remy Ingres is having a go on the inside. But he's having a go on the inside. Is he going to get past? This is the final bend. He's got to get a real sprint for the line now, and it looks as if the Belgian's got it. 46-6-6 from Remy Ingres, the Frenchman. 46-8-3, Jerome Otter, 47-09, and Matthew Jasper, 47 point two five give you some idea that's uh, 2.2 seconds outside the world record time it gives you an idea how fast these guys really go when they're gunning for a record and tremendous Blanchard just hanging on to it and putting it everything he'd got into that final bend and crosses the line there Come down the road to Elberville at eight. It's an important short circuit speed skating event before the Winter Olympics. This is the Europa Cup 92. We are looking at the second semi-final for the men's 500. Uh, the guy's just getting ready. Uh, Matthew Jasper, British interest in the first semi-final, went out. Uh, he was three quarters of a second as near as damn it off the pace only two from each semi-final go through to the final for the 500 meters and here we've got uh, O'Reilly and Gooch fairly distinguishable O'Reilly is the big one and a uh, short one and Gooch is the tall one and the Italian Marco Villami that's not him that's O'Reilly Fast boy is the Italian, strong, is the very tall Velza Boa. Completely different sort of body structure, there's O'Reilly. And next to him will be Nicky Gooch. So Gooch has scraped through with some pretty good skating in the heats here. And O'Reilly, if you remember the finals of the 1500 metres a little earlier on in the programme, he went across, uh, went across actually not on his skates, went across on his backside. Let's see whether O'Reilly can stay on his feet as the Italian sprints off and gets a good start. O'Reilly not letting him get away, dare let him get away, he's absolutely eyeing every movement here. O'Reilly making sure that the Italian Vulamin knows he's on his inside left shoulder and ready to pounce, and the Italian uh, just looking back over his shoulder as We've got uh, Velza Boa in third place. Nicky Gooch seems way off the pace. Look, miles behind at the moment, but these two. And O'Reilly goes into the lead of this stage. Now there's hardly anything in it between these two. And O'Reilly maybe just testing him as he starts to pile on the pressure now. Those huge thigh muscles just push, push, pushing for that little bit of extra speed as the Italian takes it into that final bend there. And they cross the line and... Mirko Willemann clearly took it there by 0.3 of a second from O'Reilly. Mark Velzerboa, 46.27. Nicky Gooch, 46.52. So O'Reilly and Willemann go through. But we have a look here. I'm, I'm wondering whether O'Reilly was just happy with second place, didn't want to push it too hard, or whether he really was outclassed. You see him just slipping a little bit on that corner there, actually. But the speed these boys are achieving around this 110-metre circuit lovely stuff <laughs> so we now prepare for our finals action and we bring the girls back onto the ice 500 meters and we've got two Russians an Italian and a Dutch girl in this final. 
There we're looking at Marinella Canclini, who led her heat from the front. And that's Natalia Isakova.